Next up on our panel is uh, Josh Rubner. Josh is the National Advocacy Director for the U.S. Campaign to End the Israeli Occupation, a national coalition of nearly 400 organizations working to change U.S. policy toward Israel-Palestine to support human rights, international law, and equality. Mr. Rubner holds degrees in political science, international affairs, and Middle Eastern studies, University of Michigan, Johns Hopkins School of Advanced International Studies. Mr. Rubner is a former analyst for the Congressional Research Service, specializing in Middle East affairs, foreign, foreign affairs, defense, and trade, and was also executive director of Jews for Peace in Palestine and Israel. Mr. Rubner is a frequent speaker at conferences on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and is author of U.S. Military Aid to Israel, Policy Implications and Options, which presents the rationale for ending U.S. military aid to Israel and uh, Shattered Hopes, Obama and the Quest for Israeli-Palestinian Peace, forthcoming from Verso Books. Josh, we're so glad you're here. Please join me in welcoming Josh. Thank you, Mark. Is the volume good? It's wonderful to be here with you today. It's such an honor and a privilege for me to be here speaking in the Nelson Mandela Auditorium at the University of North Carolina. And when I, thank you. And when I, when I got the invitation and saw the logistics and saw that this event here today was taking place at the Nelson Mandela Auditorium, I couldn't help but be reminded of that great person's quote when he was president of South Africa back in 1997. And he said that on the International Day of Solidarity with the Palestinian people, quote, we know too well that our freedom is incomplete without the freedom of the Palestinians. And I would say not only was Nelson Mandela right, but moreover, as long as we continue to arm Israel to the teeth to oppress the Palestinians, we will be complicit in denying Palestinians that very freedom. I'd like to thank the Abrahamic Initiative on the Middle East, UNC Students for Justice in Palestine, the Salam Shalom Committee of the Church of Reconciliation and the Global Center of Education for sponsoring this important event today. As Mark mentioned, I'm the National Advocacy Director of the U.S. Campaign to End the Israeli Occupation, a national coalition of more than 400 organizations working to change our country's policies toward Israel and the Palestinian people, to end our support for Israeli military occupation, to end our country's support for Israel's apartheid policies toward the Palestinian people, and to change those policies to the one and the only basis on which there can be a just and lasting peace between Israelis and Palestinians. And that is on the basis of human rights, international law, and equality for all. As Mark mentioned, we wrote a policy paper on this very issue, U.S. military aid to Israel. I have copies outside. It's a $5 requested donation if you'd like a copy. It has a lot more details that I can get into in my allotted time, and I will try not to take more than my allotted time. And we also have these bumper stickers, which, if you agree with me that you support Palestinian human rights, please get a bumper sticker. We have a $1 suggested donation for those, and that will help support our work. Now, in the few minutes that I have today, I want to give you just five although I could give you many, many more. But the top five reasons why I believe that we must end US military aid to Israel. And I'm gonna go in reverse order. Number five, Israel does not need military aid from the United States. When we hear the word aid, we think of associations of poverty, we think in terms of humanitarianism, we think in terms of lifting people up. 
And indeed, U.S. foreign policy is at its best when its U.S. foreign policy dollars are going to that purpose of lifting up the very poor of the poor in our world. But Israel is not a poor country. In fact, according to the International Monetary Fund in 2011, Israel is the 27th wealthiest country in the world based on per capita gross domestic product. Israelis enjoy a higher standard of living than do people in Spain, than do people in Saudi Arabia, than do people in South Korea. We are not giving our military aid to a poor country. We are giving it to a wealthy one. Israel does not need our money. But because we do give Israel so much money, Israel gets more than half of the entire U.S. military aid budget every year. Not that I agree that U.S. foreign policy should be arming foreign countries, oftentimes arming dictatorial regimes, arming regimes that undermine human rights and suppress the very freedoms that the Palestinians are denied as well. But that is the case, that the United States gives the lion's share of its military aid budget to Israel every single year. Or to think of it in another way. Our military aid, our taxpayer finance weapons to Israel, underwrite 20% of Israel's entire military budget. One fifth of everything that Israel spends on its military is paid for by us as the US taxpayer. Reason number four to end US military aid to Israel. Military aid to Israel should be ended because Israel is misusing these weapons in violation of our own laws, as Ron mentioned. Let me mention two such laws to you. Number one, the Arms Export Control Act says that for any country either buying on the open market or receiving from U.S. taxpayers U.S. weapons must comply with certain conditions for how these weapons are used. They can be used for internal security, which means for legitimate policing purposes, and they can also be used for, quote, legitimate self-defense. Now, no one is denying that Israel has a right of self-defense. Having a right of self-defense is the cornerstone of our international relations and legal system. But to say that this, this weaponry has to be used for legitimate purposes is something much different. It is never legitimate in international law to deliberately attack civilians. It is never legitimate under international law to destroy a person's home for the sole purpose of punishing them. It is never legitimate to take your population and to settle it and to colonize it on territory that you occupy. No, Israel is not using these weapons for internal security. They are using these weapons to prosecute an illegal foreign military occupation that has now lasted for more than 45 years. And every single day, Israel is misusing these US weapons to commit gross human rights violations against the Palestinian people that have absolutely no correlation with legitimate self-defense. The Foreign Assistance Act is very clear. The Foreign Assistance Act regulates how we give our money to foreign countries, whether it's military aid, economic aid, multilateral aid. The Foreign Assistance Act is crystal clear. It says that no aid to a country can be given which engages in a consistent pattern of gross violations of internationally recognized human rights. Does that sound like any country that we're here talking about this afternoon? Yes, it does. 
because Israel commits systematic and gross human rights violations against the Palestinian people every single day. And according to U.S. law, when a country does that, they are not eligible to receive any form of U.S. assistance. So to comply with our own laws, we believe that we're a country of the rule of law. Well, if we are, then let's, then let's apply those laws. Let's actually say and do what's in the Foreign Assistance Act, which is to prohibit aid from going to countries like Israel. Number three, we simply can't afford it. We simply cannot afford it. We are $16.8 trillion in debt as a country. Try to wrap your mind around what that number even means. I can't. We have 48 million of our citizens in this country on food stamps today because they don't have the money to buy food. We have 50 million fellow citizens in this country who live below the poverty line. One in every four school children now lives below the poverty line. We have 21 million Americans who are in effect unemployed. We cannot afford military aid to Israel. We just sequestered the federal budget. Do you know what that means? That for every single social program, domestic spending program, 5% was slashed across the board. Between 2009 and 2018, the United States is scheduled to give $30 billion in weapons to Israel. On our website, aidtoisrael.org, we broke down how that money is for each state, each congressional district, county, and city in the country. And we found the Chapel Hill's portion of this $30 billion amounts to $13.6 million. The residents of Chapel Hill will give Israel $13.6 million in weapons between 2009 and 2018. Right here in Chapel Hill, that could fund 165 low-income families for affordable housing vouchers, or 226 unemployed people for green jobs training, or 403 at-risk students with early reading education programs, or get this, 11,000 people who don't have health care insurance in Chapel Hill could receive primary health care with the same amount of money that you, the taxpayers of Chapel Hill, are giving in weapons to Israel every single year. Now, to make matters worse, when Obama went to Jerusalem, he pledged to extend this military aid beyond 2018. And instead of the $30 billion that we're already on the hook for, on top of $100 billion that has already been given to Israel. President Obama wants to negotiate for $40 billion more of our taxes to go in weapons to Israel. We can't afford it. Number two, giving Israel these weapons defeats US policy. Defeats US policy. So when you hear the president talking about the need to freeze Israeli settlements, when you hear the president in Jerusalem talking about freedom and self-determination for the Palestinian people, all of these goals, all of these things are countermanded and denied and defeated by these weapons that we give to Israel. We have a policy of all carrots and no sticks. We have a policy whereby if Israel defies us, then we get down on our knees and we say, please, what can we do to help us help you get our foreign policy goals achieved? Now, how many people here are parents? When your child defies you, 
Do you give that child a present for defying you? No. Why? That creates a spoiled child. That creates a child who's going to go to you and intentionally misbehave knowing that he or she can still get that gift for you. Well, why would that child behave in that case? And this is exactly the situation that you have today. When President Obama says, pretty please Israel, just engage in this fake freeze of your illegal settlements just for two or three months, I don't care if you colonize Palestinian land beyond that time, pretty please just fake like you're stopping these settlements for a couple months. And if you do all of that, then I'll give you billions of dollars worth of F-35s out of our pockets. Well, what would you do if you were Israel in that case? Of course, you would say, no thanks, President Obama. We're not even going to pretend like we're going to freeze these settlements because we know that we're just going to get the weapons anyway, no matter what we do. Now, number one, and since the first speaker took a couple more minutes, maybe I can ask for a couple more as well. Number one, and this was mentioned by Ron as well, the number one reason why we must end US military aid to Israel is because we are complicit. We are responsible for Israel's human rights abuses of the Palestinian people. From 2000 to 2009, wrap your head around this figure. We gave Israel more than 670 million weapons rounds of ammunition and related equipment. Nearly 500 different types of weapons. Every single thing that the Israeli military does to the Palestinian people is accomplished with US weapons. It is inconceivable for Israel to do even the simplest, most mundane, routine action like going out on a patrol without utilizing US military equipment. In just three years, in just three years, the State Department paid for, licensed, and delivered more than 47 million rounds of ammunition to the Israeli military. Just three years. Just in those three years, the United States gave more than enough bullets to Israel to kill every single Palestinian living under military occupation 10 times over. That's the extent to which we're arming Israel. And this is not just a theoretical issue. This is not just a hypothetical issue. No, these bullets do kill people. One of these bullets killed 10-year-old Abir Aramin, shot in the back of her head by Israeli border police as she was walking home from her East Jerusalem school in January of 2007. And yes, in that same amount of time that we gave Israel those 670 million weapons in the last decade, Israel killed at least 2,969 Palestinians who took absolutely no part in hostilities, including 1,128 children. Those statistics courtesy of the Israeli human rights organization, B'Tselem. And not only is it true that when Israel shoots to death a Palestinian child like Abir Aramin, that it's our bullets and our guns that are responsible for that killing, but other weapons as well. The five members of the Abu Halima family in Gaza who were decapitated and burned to death by a white phosphorus artillery shell in January 2009 were killed by a white phosphorus shell produced here in the United States and paid for by us as US taxpayers. Or, and I see we have a display outside of a tear gas canister, and I'm glad that we do, because Basim Abu Rahmeh 
was shot and killed with one of these high velocity tear gas canisters in January of 2011 in his West Bank village of Bilain when he was engaging in nonviolent protest. And his death is immortalized in the Academy Award nominated film, Five Broken Cameras. We are complicit, we are responsible for all of these deaths. We are paying for the weapons that Israel could buy for itself and that we ourselves cannot afford even though these U.S. weapons are being used in violation of U.S. law and to defeat U.S. policy, making us complicit in Israel's human rights abuses of the Palestinian people. If you agree with me that we must end this policy of providing Israel with these weapons, please fill out a postcard to President Obama asking him to fund community needs and not Israel's human rights abuses of the Palestinian people. Thank you very much.